Can you hear me now? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Let's. Sorry. 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 Let's resume so you can have a better idea. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let's let's go one. Let's go back again so you don't have problems. It's, it's going to. It's not going to be a problem here. Okay. Okay. Sorry about this. This problem. It's a technical problem. So, as I said before, what is a CV? Uh, it's a personal marketing document. So it is the document in which you sell yourself. As a prospective to the prospective employer employers okay so you tell here about all the positive things about you you talk about your experience your history your skills your abilities and achievements okay this is the way this is the document that tells the, the employers that you are the guy that you are the one they are looking for that you are the person they need to hire okay this is so important. This is the importance of writing a CV properly. So, in this uh, seminar, I will try to include all the information that is necessary, just the necessary, because as you see, employers read lots of CVs during the day, so it's necessary or it's important to include just the necessary things they want. All right? Let's continue. What information to include? Let's let's go back again with this. Uh, uh, the first part here is your personal information, which is your name, your professional title, and contact details. All right? As uh, their four name or your first name and surname, just one name and surname, your professional title here. The location, you can explain your town, your country, your phone number, and your email address. In case you have a LinkedIn profile, you should include it there too. It's so important, so, so important these days. As I was saying, and, and unfortunately you couldn't hear, mostly uh, employers look for people through this, uh, through, through LinkedIn. It's such an important tool nowadays. You have to be updated with this because it's like Facebook for professionals. So if you want to get good jobs, you should have your profile updated all the time. Try to check it every one, every other day so you can have an idea. Okay, this is very very important. Uh, something else I mentioned before was that when you use an email, when you include an email address, it is necessary that it is serious. It is a serious one. I said before that I, when I used to be a coordinator and I was checking emails, email addresses, they were not so serious. For example, cat lover at at gmail.com for example that's not serious at all so what you have to include there is a very serious email address so you look like a like a real professional if you if you mention those kinds of emails which are not appropriate simply they will discard you or you won't be you won't participate in the process okay as, as I say here CVs with unprofessional email addresses are ignored so let's remember that which is very important okay uh, I wrote an example about myself in this case. Uh, ah, something else I, I forgot to mention, that I was doing some research here, and some uh, pages, some, some experts mentioned that uh, you only should include the address, the, sorry, the, the city or the district. However, some other experts uh, say that it's necessary to include your address. So. It will depend on you. It, it's it's not a it's not a problem if you include your full address. You can include your full address, or you can, uh, or you can just mention the district where you live. Okay. I put here my email address, which is a serious one. I didn't put any any nicknames or any other things which are not uh, appropriate if you're looking for a job. So it's it's necessary to keep it formal, right? And I include my LinkedIn profile as an example, because this is how people contact you. 
in different in different places. Mm -hmm. Now nowadays it's very very important to have your profile updated. Okay. Now let's continue with the rest uh, with the rest of the of this, of, with this, with the following slide. Now here when you after we give our personal information all our details about contact details and all those things we need to start including our personal profile. I try to divide this and to explain this uh, using three questions. We need to write a paragraph in which we answer these three important questions. Okay? Let's see. The first one is, who are you? The second question is, what can you offer to the company? And the third one is, what are your career goals? Okay? Something, uh, well, I don't know if it's necessary to mention, but, but just in case, when we talk about career, we are referring to our professional developments. We're, okay? It's very important that we have this clear. Uh, as I wrote here, this, is, this small paragraph displays who you are, your skills and strengths relevant to the sector or job role and your career goals. Approximately, they say, four sentences that you have to include. Okay? So I will show you an example where, and I put some colors in it, describing each of the questions, okay? So let's remember one more time. Who are you? What can you offer, the company, to, offer to the company? And what are your career goals? So you have to keep that in mind if you want to write a personal profile before writing a CV, okay? Let's see. I wrote an example here about uh, I got it I got this a highly skilled who are you the first question is who are you right a highly skilled mechanical engineer looking to resume a position in industri in industrial construction extremely knowledgeable with seven year seven years industry experience so this is who I am I'm trained I'm, I'm I'm explaining in a few words who I am okay the second question was, what can I offer, right? What can I offer? I possess a wide skill set, including condition-based maintenance through working an automated system on large-scale building projects. This is all, this is refers to my skills, to my abilities, to my knowledge, to what I can offer to the company. So depending on what they're looking for, I mentioned who I am, I mentioned what I can do to them, how I can be helpful for them, how I can be uh, of utility to the company, and finally, what are my career objects? My career objects to reestablish a career in a progressive organization which requires engineer exper expertise after a short career break to take care of a newborn. So in this case, the person is explaining that he had a, that he, uh, due to uh, you know having a kid or something, he had to stop working for a while. He had like maybe a gap, a gap, mom, a gap period or sabbatical period. So what he's trying to do here is to resume a job position. Mm -hmm. So as as we said before, here. We are trying to talk. The examples that the example that mentions who you are, you describe who the, your professional aspect, uh, and what is your the objective of your of, of your of your what is your objective here? Then you describe your skills, your abilities, the the things you could offer to the company, the the asset you can be for the company, and finally, what are your career of or your career goals. Okay. This takes maybe some time, and it will depend on the company that you are applying to. That's why you have to shape your CV. Sometimes you have some skills which are not exactly what they need, but you have you can adapt your your knowledge to what they really want. So it's important that you mention this uh, depending on the offer that is proposed. Okay. So maybe you have to the, the 
the qualifications and the experience, but you don't know how to how to write them. So it's necessary for you to take your time before you do this part. Okay? Everything depends on the way you write it. It will sell itself. Okay? So let's continue. After that, well, we had first the personal information and contact personal and uh, contact information. Then you have your personal profile, which refers to your work experience. Now we're talking about your employment history. Your employment history. In this case, it's important that you list your experience in reverse chronological order. So you start with the most recent and then you continue going down. Okay? So you have to mention the last place you work in. You worked in and you have to also uh, explain your role, what you did there. You should start the month, the year, and the month, the month, the year you started and the month and the year that you finished. Where it was located, the company name and the role you had. So you can uh, you can mention in a in a general way what you were perform what you were your responsibilities what you were doing what what was your role there then you can uh, explain uh, what were your responsibilities what what did you you have people you, know, you were uh, people were in charge you were pe in charge of how many people you uh, let's say you what were your the achievements you you got what were the projects you you did there all this information has to be included there according to every place where you worked always try to write it in a very positive way sometimes it's hard for us to tell our goals or to tell what we achieved but remember that it, this will depend this depends on what you did depending on what you did you will get uh, you will be called by the employers. So it's necessary that you mention all the positive things you said and you did there. Okay? It's quite important to do that. Now, uh, here, uh, well, that's it, online. So I got some ex some examples here that we can take. For example, I put here April to 2012 until July 2018. I put an example, Cambridge, England. Cambridge University English professor. Okay, what I put here is uh, in a general way what uh, was uh, what was the uh, the position and what were some of the of the duties. I put here professor in charge of preparing foreign students in order to be able to attend college lectures without difficulties during the academics or their academic experience. So in this case, he's trying to describe in a general way how students, that he was in charge of uh, helping students with their English in order to uh, be able to attend lectures without having problems uh, with the language, especially, you know, because academic lectures are so different to usual language, to everyday language, so this was the objective here. Uh, some of the achievements mentioned here is that students' progress highly increased during the years this he this person was in the was in charge of the department. Okay, so that is something important that you have to include here uh, when you are performing as uh, when you are describing your your job. It is quite important to mention uh, what you did. What were your achievements? What were the projects you 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 obtain? What were the goals you obtained? All the things that you believe are going to help you, you have to include them there. It's quite quite important to uh, highlight all those achievements thing that that happened when you were in that position. The same with all your experience has to be the same way. You have to include the month the year, the place, and the country, the position, and the the functions you had, and also all what you obtained, all what you reached in that position. Okay. 
let's move to our next uh, our next slide which has to do with education and qualifications here it's important to include the name of the institutions and the dates you were there if you studied in a university or a college you have to include the dates and the institutions followed by the qualifications and grades you achieved an example here is the institution name the dates you attended from what time to what time the qualification and the subject you the subject and the grade you obtain okay so as i said before the name the dates you were the qualifications and grades you achieved yeah Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you one example, one more example here. As the same as you as you did as we do with uh, our, our work experience, with our professional experience, we should do it with our education and qualifications. For example, I'm including here. Uh, I'm, I just got this example from, and we have Pennsylvania University, March 1996. August 2002, a PhD, a philosophy doctorate, which is that, that those are the acronyms for PhD, philosophy doctorate in infectious disease, and uh, the, pre the the previous experience he had is Oxford University, September 1990 to July 1995, and Bachelor of Arts or Sciences. You can say arts or sciences. So the PhD is like the specialization, all the courses he did in order to become a, a doctor in this in this area. Mm -hmm. This is more or less what we should include in, when we refer to our education: the name of the place where we study, the time we spend there, the grade or the, the degree we obtained, and the specialty if we had one or the major we have if we have one. Okay. I got one example here, which refers to the professionals that are a little farther along their careers or have many certificates in the repertoire. You can lay your qualifications by mentioning, for example, a second specialization or a master's degree or another course or a diploma course or another certificate, another specialization, the institution and the year and the year in which you uh, described, in which you obtained this specialization. Okay, this is important because as not not all of the courses we do or all what we study are, uh, end up in a in a degree, which should also in, in include the information we also with the other courses or specializations we do. Okay, this is uh, of vital importance. When we are uh, when we do extra courses or specializations, okay. So uh, I don't know if for if so far do you have any questions? We can. Uh, this is pretty much the information to be included in a CV. Uh, have do you have any questions, or do you want me to repeat something, or to go to some other points? Some details I would like to mention is, for example, that what things we haven't included. If you can see there, maybe you can you can see that I haven't included. For example, you don't ask for a picture, or they don't ask for your marital status. Mm -hmm. you Arnold uh, so uh, some other important things that we need to take into account here when when writing a 
uh, when writing this sort of a of, of you know of CV is uh, I don't know if you have heard about a cover letter which is another way to present yourself it has a little bit, a little bit more elaboration but for now this is just a part of what we are doing so this is this is the first step and I like to know if you have some other questions so we can try to deepen a little bit more on this because I try to give you the, the, the basic steps so you could uh, so you could see if you have any any questions any inquiries or something to include here in order to help you uh, develop this uh, CV which is as I said before a marketing tool when you are looking for a job some things that we can mention here another thing that, I, that is not mentioned here is the date of birth and I didn't mention it because it, it is a little con it depends on the country you are for example in the United States it's not necessary but in the UK it is necessary so it depending on, on the policies or on the countries you are working or you're applying to that you have to be changing some aspects okay another thing is that you they don't post a picture because it is considered that uh, there might be some some way of uh, racism or there they could there, there could be some sort of uh, there wouldn't be an objective uh, selection if they only uh, choose a person just by seeing their picture. So that's why they prefer not to include not to include it on a CV. Okay. Another important aspect now is uh, uh, what we what I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, any any anything you like to to ask before we we move on a little bit with this? Maybe, uh huh. Here, so writing something. I like to hear you a little bit because, you know, I try to do it fast in order to give you time for your questions and and to see how much you could, um, if it was clear or not. Aha! Uh -huh. Personal references. Very good. That's a good question. That is upon the employer. The employer. So you have to say add, add request. In case they request for that, once they call you, they will ask you for your references. It's not necessary to include references nowadays. You are not supposed to do it because you know your CV has only one or two pages. If you include too many references, you lose a lot of space. So add disposal. So I require when they require them, it's important to. Uh, it's important not to include them at the very beginning. Just in case they require for them, you should include them. So the first time, do not include personal references. That is uh, that is something that as a, a, quite a big recommendation from from uh, from you know from experts. You shouldn't include uh, references unless they are requested. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Very good question, Arnold. Thank you for your participation. Uh, I don't know. You have any other inquiries, guys? Any other questions that we can work again, or do you want me to to do something again to repeat something? Is there something else you'd like me to to tell you or to help you with? Maybe I went too fast and I need to restart something and I need to. To explain again something.
we still have some time, so it 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 will it, it depends on you. So we, if you can help me with this, so we can, we can I can give you more more information. I, well, there's something uh, I I I didn't mention maybe, but it's important. It's very important. Uh, be very careful with your grammar and your spelling and all those things. Unfortunately, there there was there were some mistakes here I, I uh, th that I didn't check here, but it's important that before you send something, before you send your CV, you have to proofread it. You re ask somebody to read it for you to check it out for you so you are totally sure that your your writing is correct is is impeccable that is very important if a recruiter sees that your email no sorry that your cv has mistakes has grammatical mistake contains uh, you know some spelling mistakes unfortunately you are out of the process because they that means that you are not paying enough attention that you are not doing uh, you're not making an effort to do this uh, work well so please something really really important is the spelling and the grammar you're using try not to use big words to impress the public because sometimes more is less unless it's more as they say in Spanish so it's very important that you use words that you know. Don't try to impress with uh, too elaborate words as they sometimes do not help. Okay? The grammar, this, as, as I said, is quite important. The spelling, the words you use, the language you use. Okay, uh, somebody's writing something. Okay, uh, any any other questions uh, around here? Do you have any other questions? Let me see what else I can give you. So you can, uh, so we can have some more more ideas. In case, uh, well, also you can. If you think you can, you have to include more information. You could, uh, you can mention some, uh, let's say, some your hobbies, for example. But remember that your hobbies have to be related to working with, working as a team player, working with groups. Do not mention that you watch TV or you do things alone. The idea of of you explaining your hobbies. Is telling that you uh, uh, try to mention hobbies which are related in a way to the job you're applying to. Maybe if you're applying for an administrative issue and you have to share with people, so you can mention that you like spending time with friends, going to meetings, going to gatherings, uh, going to clubs with people, or things like that, which are things about social if you say reading it's an individual activity which is not is not helpful if you are if you are applying for a job in which you have to interact with people okay so this is another another important thing that you have to include when if in case you have you have something that's missing and you want to include something else you mention uh, about hobbies but trying to be related to the job you're applying to Okay, that is uh, that is another another important thing to take into account.
Mm -hmm. uh, Gracie was writing something, but I think she 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 forgot she she wanted to do it, but something happened. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Somebody's writing there. Arnold's writing there or something. Let's see what else we can mention about here, about this, about CV writing. You could also mention about your your computer skills, which are now so so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what do you mean by sending a CV online? Yeah, well, you, you can do it online. Uh, you, uh, what, what do you mean with that question? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't get it so well. Right now, we, we, we usually send emails online, so that, that is what, what most companies ask for. Send, they, they give you an email address. And you have to send your CV with that, with with your with all your information. Okay, let's see if I get it, if I understand your question. Well, nowadays, most com we have to send a CVs online. There are very few companies that require CVs, uh, on a, uh, physical CVs. So, uh, what is now, the trend is to send everything on online. You know, I do it most of the time, and most people, most uh, companies, now post uh, jobs on websites, um, companies on, on jobs websites, and you only have to create your CV there, or you can attach a file with your CV, but always remember that you have to adapt it to the requirements of the company. You cannot send the same CV to every company. It is important that according do what they ask for, you shape your CV, okay? As you say, if I send CV online, yeah, you need to see the requirements, you need to see what they are looking for, and according to that, you change the language of the information you have on your CV, so it uh, fits what they want. If you think you are the person for that job, what you have to do is to change the information specifically in your personal profile because you are mentioning exactly who you are, what you can offer to the company, and what are your expectations. So depending on that, you have to change a little bit or shape according to the requirements you see in the company and the goals you can achieve there because every company is different and uh, depending on that, you also are going to set your own goals, right? Let's see, there's some, somebody's writing something there. There was, well, there was, there's something right now.
exact according to the company and its requirements you are supposed to change your profile that's why we that's why the title if you see is shaping my cv so what we do is according to the requirement we start to you know change the way the words we're going to use change our objectives change the way we do uh, as an example depending on the company I, I i work at, at universities i work at companies and i work in, in different places depending on what they require i change my discourse in order to make it more uh, appropriate to what they want this is important when you want to uh, apply to a job because you can you maybe your profile is the same but depending on the needs of each company you have to adapt right for example in a university i work as a professor uh, for the english specialty so what i do is that i say i have i have experience working in this area in this other area and this other area so i try to emphasize the aspects that are required in that company. If they ask me for being a, teach, a virtual teacher, I mention or I highlight, I point that I have experience working as an online teacher, that I have a, a business working on that, or that I've been working within this for many years. And I can prove it because I can show it through a model class or through a sample class. I can show them that I know about technology. Depending on every requirement, depending on what each company is looking for, you are supposed to change your profile. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Uh, are, go, 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 go again with your question. Do you think that it is now a more attractive way to... Yeah, as I said before, uh, the CV is your marketing strategy to be hired by a company. So, as they say, you, shaping a CV is what we have to do. We cannot have a, a, the same CV for everything. And, and I tell you, this personally has worked for me, as I told you. I work in different areas. I work in face-to-face -face classes. I work in online classes. I work giving seminars like now. And depending on what the company is looking for, you have to present those skills. Maybe you are an expert working in, in an area, but the company needs you, to, needs another part. So you have to forget about the, the part you're next and mention the I mentioned this other aspect, which is also important. Maybe you, you what you know is complementary, but you also know about this other thing. So you have to mention that. So how do you highlight that by explaining in using the appropriate words, the best words, so they can uh, so they can uh, see that you know about what they want and they are going to hire you. Okay. Depending on the job offer, you have to you have to shape your your CV. This is my recommendation, and this is something that has worked for me in many occasions and keeps on working. Because I just got another job, which they were looking for a uh, for online teachers, and they were impressed with my skills of of the, of the platform because I learned fast. But I already had an idea of how to work like that. That's why you may have you may be good. You may be an expert on something, but if you need especially one aspect that they are looking for, you have to mention it, you have to highlight it, because that's what is, that is the plus they want. And you have to let them know that you have this skill. Okay? That is, that is, that is the main part of this. That is the main part of, of a CV. Here I uh, uh, well to to finish or to almost close the, this. These are some of the references I used. Uh, I just put three because there were like five or six that I used, but I was looking for the information which could fit better to what I wanted to to explain here because you know an hour sometimes is very little and an hour sometimes is is too much. 
So I tried to see, depending on how we were working, uh, what was necessary. Now I see if we need more, to, I will need maybe more more things to show you, but I wanted to, uh, I like to, as, please feel free to ask as many questions as possible, because the idea is to have interaction, not only to, to explain, because sometimes uh, people have doubts or have some uh, aspects that need to be checked, and that's why I tried to make it light for you, and if you had any questions, as they said, I was uh, going to answer them, okay? So remember, that's why the name of this seminar is Shaping My CV. You shape a CV, you change it according to your needs, okay? This is the important part. And remember also that it is a marketing tool for you. You have to sell yourself to potential employers. So take your time to develop it. Don't think it's a waste of time because it will be helpful for you. It is the first step, but it could be the most important. If you don't you don't go through the first step, you're lost. So this is the base for everything. Try to highlight your your good points, try to highlight your your skills, your abilities, all the good things you have have to be highlighted here, okay? Don't feel bad about them, because this is necessary to do them. It's necessary to show that you are the one for the pose, for the position. Sometimes we are kind of humble, or we feel like, no, I don't think that's right to mention. Yeah, it is right. You have to mention. All the good things you have done so far have to be mentioned, okay? Do not forget that. Don't feel bad about it. You have to present the best things about you, all the achievements, all the goals, all the good things that happened when you were working on a place. That's what they asked for. Uh, do you have any other questions so far? Maybe I'm speaking too much and you need uh, you want to say something. Do you have any other questions, guys? I don't know if, if the idea of this, if the idea is clear, if, uh, I don't know, if there's something else to, to to help you with, feel free to ask, please. Guys, no more questions so far. So let's make a quick review. So we 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 close the we close the, this air, this seminar this weekly. Okay, this is conference. So let's do one more time. What we'll CVs as personal marketing document used to serve your employees. I already mentioned that like once or twice. Uh, what information we should include here? For example, we say your name, your professional title, the location, the phone, and the email. As one more time. Remember that it has to be a formal email. And if you have a, pro, a LinkedIn profile, it has to be updated so you can include it, right? Next, we were mentioning, uh, I put here my information uh, as, again, the personal profile, who you are, what can you offer to the company, and what are your goals. One more, once more, I repeat, that it has to be depending on the company you're applying to. These things may change. So you have to try to adapt it every time you look for another company. I mentioned an example here because he was looking for a specific position in industrial construction. He mentioned his experience. And what was his goal? He mentioned in this case that he was taking care of his kids, so he wanted to resume, he wanted to restart uh, uh, working. And it was that was his his objective, right? And his goals. Then, as as I mentioned, you mentioned that where you your employment history. Some people, some experts say that you should include first your education, some other first thing that your experience. Most of the time, you include your experience, your work experience first. So, I let's keep it like that. Okay, I've seen in other pages that you can you have to include your your education first, but it's more recommendable to include your your employment history. 
remember to start from the from the most recent and go back and go backwards. Finally, you should your you check your your education and qualifications. Be sure to make, to write the, the, the correct information to write correctly. Check the spelling here. I, I had some, I made some mistakes here. But there are some things that need to be checked. Uh, your studies. If you have any other studies, if you have any other specializations, diplomas. You know all those things you have. You may have studied after you finish your your university uh, courses, your major, you have to include it because you know it's part of your of your experience. It's part of what all what you have done. Okay. So, uh, do you have any uh, any questions before we close the conference? Before we finish with this presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for for your attendance. Thank you for your participation. It was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Um, all right. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Really appreciate your your comment. Thank you so much. I thought it was going too fast, but if you say that it was okay, I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. I hope you you liked it. I tried to make it as simple as possible. No, thank you for for your questions, guys. So, well, if there are no further questions, uh, well. Thank you very much again. I hope uh, I hope to contact you next week. I will try to to include maybe more information, so or I speak a little slower, so you can have a, so and and if possible to have more questions from you because they were really interesting, really helpful, and well, uh, I think it's it's time for closing this, right? Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you have a very good weekend, uh, and I hope to to see you in our next presentation. All right? So, uh, bye for now. Have a good time. And thank you. One more time.